G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. As we continue this off-season series where I'm going through each of the 18 clubs in reverse alphabetical order and giving a bit of a profile as to where I think they're at, uh, analyzing their best 22 and some of their more immediate depth, having a look at some ongoing needs uh, to potentially improve the list in the future and offering a little bit of a forecasting into how I think they'll go in the immediate future, that is 2024. And beyond and today we are doing the reigning premiers the Collingwood Football Club now I originally thought going into this video that this would be a boring one because uh, they had just won the premiership and trying to forecast their immediate future and, and trying to analyze their best 22 I, I thought this would be pretty simple uh, simply because Collingwood have already reached the pinnacle that being said there's a couple of personnel uh, issues that will be a problem for them I think going through 2024 and therefore going through this and trying to establish a best 22 was actually um, quite a challenge to be honest before I get into it, um, if you are looking for other chains that I've done this particular format on, uh, there is a playlist on this YouTube channel called Team Based Videos for 2024. So if you're looking for your own team or any others, you can find it. I've done every club from the Bulldogs up to Collingwood, which means that there is just Carlton, Brisbane and Adelaide to go after this. I've really enjoyed this series. It's allowed me the freedom to try and really get in, in touch with each club's playing list and how I think the immediate future and medium term future is gonna go for them. And I've really learned a lot. So if you want to get something out of those videos too, even if it's a club you don't support, you can find it in that playlist. And of course, while you're there, why not consider subscribing to the channel? So let's talk about the Collingwood Football Club. Our reigning premiers are black and white overlords, uh, 12 months on from a heartbreaking prelim. They come out and win the grand final by four points. It would be too dismissive to say that they were the clear best team this year. I think the Brisbane Lions were also a very good team and both of them would have been worthy premiers. But Collingwood Football Club did emerge as probably the number one uh, contender for most of 2023. I think they hit the top of the ladder at round seven and then made it obviously to the finals, winning the minor premiership with 17 wins. Then in the, when the finals came around, we saw a typical uh, Collingwood. And when I say typical of Collingwood, I mean the last few years where they made sure all of their finals were heart-stopping thrillers. First over the Melbourne Football Club by about a goal, then they won the prelim by a point, and then won the grand final by four points. It was one of the best grand finals of the modern era for sure. Um, in terms of what went right, it's hard to know exactly where to start. The first one that comes to mind is Nick Dacos ascending himself to be one of the absolute best players of the competition in a sort of hybrid halfback midfield role. Darcy Moore was also unreal this year, um, All-Australian centre half back. And then also just the, the four acquisitions that they made in the offseason all played a big part in Collingwood ultimately winning the premiership in Billy Frampton. He was there. Um, Bobby Hill won the Norm Smith medal. Tom Mitchell was an important cog in their midfield. Dan McStay, even though he missed the grand final, um, obviously was an important part of that season. So overall, characterizing Collingwood is interesting. It's uh, it's quite different to the sort of the historical perception of Collingwood. You know, previously they're, they're sort of the, the team that everyone seems to hate. Not me personally, but we're talking about a, a general perception in the AFL. They're kind of like the man united of the AFL where they're universal disliked but I feel like under Craig McRae most recently they've become one of the more interesting teams to watch and they've I think they've recruited a lot of like neutrals who enjoyed seeing Collingwood play and was happy to see them succeed I know I'm generalizing there's tons of people particularly Carlton fans probably watching this going geez I do not agree with that but there seems to be a, a bit of a um a philosophy of, of having fun and, and expressing yourself with this particular group at Collingwood under Craig McRae kind of reminds me of Jurgen Klopp in Liverpool, um, just allowing players to express themselves on field, play their own way, be be daring and aggressive, and obviously it's paid off with uh, two back-to-back -back great seasons and now one premiership. There was a little bit of a blip late in the season. I think they were missing Dacos and Darcy Moore, where their backline kind of you know, what wasn't quite functioning on all cylinders, but by the time finals came around, they were fantastic again. So before plotting their best 22 for 2024, uh, let's cover the list changes that they had. So there's been a few exits. Taylor Adams requested that trade to Sydney. That got done. Ginevan joined the Hawks through the trade period. Trent Bianco and Trey Rusco were delisted, as were Arlo Draper, Will Kelly, Tom Wilson, and Cooper Murley. In terms of additions, it's been quite a quiet off-season here for Collingwood. Just the one player traded in and just two players drafted. And I do understand that they've got a few list spots available to add players as supplemental train on players uh, which I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit but in terms of the players who officially join the club Lockie Shules comes in probably slots into that best 22 Harry Demetia was drafted with their first selection and then they added Toe Giath the running defender as well from Hawthorne's Next Generation Academy so let's talk about this best 22 as you can imagine it's fairly settled I'll chuck it up on the screen now in yellow is the one player there Lockie Shules that is new to the football club so let's go through line by line we'll start with the back line there uh, this is a relative strength for this team. Their backline has uh, has been fantastic. 
the only time they were vulnerable this year was when their back line wasn't really firing and obviously they had Dacos and more missing as I alluded to. Now there's one glaring omission there. I haven't picked Nathan Murphy. I am not too sure to what extent it is realistic he plays round one because for those unaware, uh, that concussion he sustained in the grand final seemed to be a bit of a bad one. And I think there is some doubt as to his immediate future at AFL level. Uh, fingers crossed, and I'm not fully across that, but I thought it would be worthwhile to plot this, assuming he is not available for round one. So uh, I've picked Billy Frampton in that spot, uh, which you know I don't know if it's a simple solution simply because Dan McStay is also unavailable with that ACL. But we'll get to the forward line. I've picked Billy Frampton as the second tall defender there with Darcy Moore. So not an overly tall back line, but we know it functions well. The good, the really good medium types, How Quainor, Maynard, Pendlebury, and then Nick Dacos I've picked in the middle, but he'll play a bit of back, as can Jack Crisp, obviously. Um, so it's a, it's a strong back line there. Midfield obviously kind of picks itself with Dugowie, Dacos, well, the two Dacoses, Tom Mitchell and Steel Sidebottom. So there's not too much doubt as to any of those players starting. Obviously, it remains to be seen how much time Dacos spends in the middle versus back, likewise with Pendlebury. Uh, but you'd imagine continuing his development pathway, we'd see some at least the same amount of midfield time, if not increased. The forward line. Now, this is an interesting one because I have had to pick Mason Cox at full forward. He's kind of more of a second ruck who floats forward, I think. But with no Dan McStay, structurally, I think Collingwood are a little bit vulnerable here because Mason Cox um, and Brody Majacek are the two tallest players in that forward line. And I love Majacek. He's an absolute gun, legitimate gun. He's won how many uh, leading goal kickers for them in a row? He's, he's a really consistent, good player. That being said, just structurally, without Dan McStay there, they look a little bit vulnerable again. And that was the whole reason they recruited Dan McStay there. And there's an absence of a clear play to come in. Now, I've picked Ash Johnson as the next midfielder. He's about 6'3", six, six, sorry, 6'4", six, actually. He's 193 centimeters. But again, not a true key position player. The other player I flirted with here, not literally, um, is Reef McInnes because he had a pretty good year in the VFL, uh, kicking 32 goals, I think, as a third tall forward. So uh, what's he, 194 centimeters, I think, Reef McInnes. Again, not a true key forward. So there's some spots there. I wouldn't mind seeing McInnes given an opportunity at some point throughout the season. But I feel like Ash Johnson was a little bit closer to this, this team. And that's the way I've picked it. So again, a short forward line. But what works is the, the smalls and mediums there are very strong. It's another strength of this team, with particularly Lockie Shaw's. I think he's a bit of an underrated gun of the comp. And he will hit the scoreboard, as will Bobby Hill, as will Majacek, as will Jamie Elliott. I know he's a bit of a veteran, um, so the drop-off could come at any point, but he is a pretty consistent goal kicker. And Bo McCreary there is a bit of an enforcer uh, with that pressure-style player. I think he he's a pretty safe bet to play as well. Uh, Darcy Cameron in the ruck, supported by Mason Cox. And then we just got the bench options there. I mentioned Crisp and Ash Johnson. Hoskin Elliott and Markov also make this team for me, with Lipinski as the sub. Um, he's a premiership player, so again, should feature around this team. So in terms of their immediate depth, you know, as I said, I picked Frampton. The other option there is Charlie Dean. I don't think he's played a game at AFL level, but was drafted out of the VFL as a strongly performed key position defender, and he is ready-made. So an alternative to what I've picked in this team is maybe Frampton plays forward, and they pick Charlie Dean. That is, that is a viable option for them. But again, you know, it's a little bit green, but I don't think there's a clear solution for them here because there is a lack of key position depth on this team. There's absolutely no doubt about that. A couple of unlucky smalls as well. John Noble, again, I just he, he probably gets close to this team, but this is assuming there's no injuries. And uh, he missed out on the grand final, so I've got him still just outside this team. We could see Jake O'Brien. I think he was a top 30 pick a couple of years ago uh, as another defender who's probably ready to, to play a bit more. The midfield depth is another interesting aspect here for Collingwood. So the next best midfielder I've picked out of this team is Finlay McRae, who, um, shout out Rogue Wright, I know you wanted me to pick him in this team, uh, but I don't think he quite makes it uh, necessarily over Lipinski. Now, this could be this could depend on you know the quality of their pre-seasons. There's the pre-season games to consider as well, and if Finlay McRae has a bit of a breakout pre-season, that could change. But at this stage, you know he's probably he's the next cab off the rank. The development Ed Allen will be interesting as well, kind of a tall utility player that is that is eyeing a, a transition into the midfield, a little bit like 2022's Daniel Curtin, to be honest. Probably not the same le like le level of talent or pedigree. But you could see that there's upside there, and if he harnesses his potential as a midfielder, he could make it. But that being said, it is still there's still a fairly long developmental path for him to actually become that player. So midfield depth here, I think, is not completely assured. There's also Josh Carmichael, and of course, Harry Demetia. So Demetia is one that, because he's a bit of a utility, he can play on flanks both forward and back. 
Or he could play his midfield depth, I'm not too sure. But he is someone who could realistically get a game in 2024. As for the forwards, I mentioned Reef McInnes. There's also Nathan Kruger, and we did see a little bit of Harvey Harrison as a small last year. Looking at this team in general, like it's a premiership side that's quite interesting to look at on paper because it's built on very, very high quality medium to small types and a distinct lack of quality tall. And Darcy Moore is clearly an elite player, but that's there's one high quality tall in that best 22, which is interesting. I'd say the back line is arguably their strength, uh, where everyone I've listed there is a certified gun with the exception of maybe Billy Frampton. No disrespect, but you know what I mean by that. You know, the midfield is strong. We already know this. There's there's rotations, you know, both forward and back that they could utilize as well. Like I said, I think it's just a forward line height. And unfortunately, the the clear solutions to fix this problem are not waiting in their reserves. So with respect to their ongoing needs, despite the fact that they're the, the best team in the competition and just coming off a premiership, I think they've got some clear list deficiencies. And that is key position depth. And interestingly, that's something they chose not to address in the draft. But I suppose, you know, when you're drafting 18 year olds, it's not going to fix the solution either way in terms of next year. And the reality is Collingwood is not looking at a list build over time. They're looking at how can they win the premiership again in 2024. So slightly different focuses to some of the, well, most of the other teams that I've covered so far. The, the developing tours, you know, there's Charlie Dean, like I mentioned, Reef McInnes, if you consider him a true tour. They do have a couple of young developing rucks in Aiden Begg. I think he's more of a forward ruck, a little bit undersized. And then there's Oscar Steen, I think 201 centimeters. But again, like I feel like these guys are a fair way off. Even the young midfield, oh, look, this is not a massive priority. And as you can expect, a team in contention is probably not going to have their next batch of A-grade midfielders waiting for them in the VFL. So this is not something that is novel or specific to Collingwood. Um, but obviously, they'll have one eye on the transition and the age of Pendlebury, Sidebottom and Mitchell is worth considering. So they'll want to get something out of Finley McRae and Ed Allen, of course. So let's talk about their supplemental list spot. So they can sign, um, I think, two, potentially three train-on players this offseason to bolster their list. And they've got six training with them. The reason I say three, potentially, um, or it could even be four in theory, because Nathan Murphy and Dan McStay could uh, be put on an inactive list. Uh, But that being said, I don't know to what extent that is likely. So let's just assume it's going to be two, but they've got six players training with them at the moment. Campbell Husswaite, 23-year-old midfielder from their VFL side. Josh Eyre, Josh Eyre, Josh Eyre. He used to be on Essendon's list. He's a versatile key position player. Might play forward or back, I'm not too sure. Uh, Bryn Tickle, who used to be on Port Adelaide's list, is also training with them as a 203-centimetre ruckman. Jack Bytel, the midfielder delisted from St Kilda. Sam Sofranides, Sofranides, Sofranides nuts, a 194-centimetre intercepting de- defender um, that is also training with them. And Lockie Sullivan, a 26-year-old midfielder from the VFL, I think. So so some clear positional like t- targets there. There's a ruck, there's a couple of key position defenders, and there's a mature midfielder. So I think it makes sense to add, you know, at least one mature midfielder, whether it be Bytel or Hustwaite or whoever. Um, I think the ruck situation is probably less important than the key position defender situation as well. So maybe we see Sofranides or Josh Eyre or Josh Eyre or whatever it is. So it'll be interesting to see what they uh, sign out of this because I think whoever they do pick, they'll have the intention of potentially using them as depth this year and they'll get games. So that is my attempt at analyzing Collingwood in terms of forecasting their 2024. I think you'd be crazy to suggest they're not probably the flag favorite based on probabilities. They got a strong list, but it does throw an interesting spanner in the works if they are potentially without Nathan Murphy and Dan McStay. I don't want to perpetuate this Nathan Murphy thing in case I'm wrong, but my understanding is, you know, uh, they were going to review his situation and see if he's going to be able to play football in the near future. So fingers crossed that he does get himself right. Obviously, you know, concussion injuries are very serious and, and horrible. So it'd be great if he's in there round one. If he's in there round one, maybe Frampton plays as a forward ruck and gives him a little bit of height down there. So I, I do think those things are important and I do think the supplemental players that they pick might be important as well because the margins at the top of the ladder are pretty tight for sure and uh, it'll be interesting. But either way, Colling will be in contention this year and potentially for the foreseeable future. And they can potentially reinforce their squad and top up as they go and just keep being competitive because Collingwood don't really dip down the ladder too much. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. Let me know what changes to the best 22 you would make. Uh, If you enjoyed this video, if you could recommend it to a Collingwood fan, um, that'd be great. I need all the help I can get through this off season to help grow the channel. But I appreciate you watching. Thank you for the support and thank you for being subscribed. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.